Petey Beats here from Pop Turn is speaking to Ian Rappaport about NFL Draft. The pick is in, which is streaming now on the Roku channel. It's an honor and privilege to speak with you, man. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. I mean, I know, <laughs> like, it really is cool that you, you're giving me some time. I know <laughs> cut day is upon us, uh, is, is done, and, uh, you know, we're right, right around the corner, man. Week one is right around the corner. I know. I'm I'm excited about it. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, business that we cover, contracts and players getting released and um, trades, and there's a lot of stuff. And leading up to the season, it seems there's an endless string of things. It's crazy. Um, but, you, you, but as we get closer to the season, then it's like football comes into focus. And like, I find myself, you know, people always ask me, they're like, you know, who's your team? And like, I don't refer a team just because of the job I have. It's just different. Mm -hmm. But I really find myself looking so forward to football. Like, I cannot wait for the first week of the season for all these different things that we spend so much time talking about. It all gets to play out on the field. And I really love that part of it. Absolutely. And we're talking about NFL Drought the Pick is in. I love this documentary so much. It's streaming now on the Roku channel. Um, I, I'm gonna I it's really interesting because being on both sides of things, working at, you know, uh draft events, like when when I was doing some NHL work and everything, it's cool because I feel like the the pace is a little kind of different when you're watching it as a viewer versus kind of being at an event as the NFL insider or being a team in the draft room. At home, you feel like it's so long. It's this weekend of like, all right, waiting for the picks and everything. Let's go. But then when you're at the event and you're at the draft and you see it with this documentary, it is quick. Do you find that interesting? I feel like that adds to the complexity of an NFL draft as well. Yeah, I mean, and so much goes into, at least from what I do, so much goes into preparing for the draft and, yep. you know, kind of being ready for everything. Like, basically, what I'll do is I'll just go through and I will call everyone on my phone and I'll make a big list and I'll have like a 25 page Word document of all my notes. Yep. And very little of it gets reported. You just gather information because it does happen really fast and things come out of nowhere. Like, you get, like, you can actually see on the documentary. Yep. I get a text and it's like Texans trade to three. And I was like, to be clear, are the Texans trading to three? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh my God. And then you have to be ready to discuss on national TV mm -hmm. uh, what just happened and why. And so like you have to be ready no matter what, extremely quick. Like you can see it on the show. Like I literally say like trade like Texans and they come to me like three, two, you know, so like, yeah, it is so fast. Um, but that's just kind of show like the, you know, the work that goes into it has to be so, so thorough. So you could respond basically regardless of what happens. A hundred percent. I'm curious what the mindset is when you kind of sign on to this documentary. Like, how much do you know about it? Like, did you know it was like, like, I'm sure you knew NFL films, but did you know it was going to go on the Roku channel? Did you know it was going to be like that in depth or it was going to actually like feature you like off the desk and show all that stuff? Like, I'm just curious how much you knew about this project. Um, so I get, a, I get a phone call from one of the producers at Skydance to kind of go through some stuff with me. Yep. And, you know, I get... I get plenty of phone calls from people I don't know asking, you know, opinions or like whatever. So like I knew Skydance and obviously I knew NFL Films. So, you know, she explained that, you know, NFL Films and Skydance are going to combine in this documentary. So I'm kind of talking through like different people to talk to and who would be good to get. And, you know, I kind of assume the phone call is over and she's like, oh, no, like we want to follow you. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? OK, well, you know, I have a lot of conversations that are private so <laughs> as long as those are kept private i think that's okay and the, you know they are so good and so professional that like it was never a worry at all yeah. like you, you you can sort of see why people trust nfl films like they do because like they were just rock stars it was great um and i'm like well like i love the draft i don't have any secrets i'm very transparent with anything anyway yep. so like they wanted to come hang out and put it on camera for a couple of days. Like, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I sort of thought at the end, like, people will end up learning above all else why I love the draft and how much goes into it. And, like, at the very least, if that's what they get, um, I thought that was fine. And I thought they did an amazing job of, like, at least showing people – why the draft is really awesome. A hundred percent. And this is more of kind of a big general question. I mean, it really kind of links to the documentary, Ian. But I mean, 
you know, especially with my interviews, we interview people from pop culture, sports, music, all around the world, all around the world as well. Um, we love the BTS, the behind the scenes kind of discussions of how the art is made and, you know, the audition process. And I think we're just obsessed with behind the scenes and how things are done and everything. From your line of work, like, what do you, like, why do you think we love the behind the scenes of, like, the games or the drafts so much, in your opinion, from what you've seen on social media and everything? I mean, I love the behind the scenes, too. Yeah. You know, like, I spent half my life watching documentaries on Roku or Netflix yeah. or Hulu or literally whatever. Like I spent, I watch a million documentaries Yep. and I, I like to know everything. And I think my, you know, like there's a scene where you could see me joking, except I'm not joking about um, being voted biggest gossip in high school. Like I want to know everything. And, you know, there's a little bit of like, you sort of wonder like, all right, well, you know, if you know too much about, you know, this, about your team or your sport or your hero, you know, is it going to be, is it going to ruin it for you? Mm -hmm. And I've found that the more I know, the better it is, you know, like the more I know, the more I want to know and the more I enjoy it. So like half of my job is finding out the behind the scenes of like what happened and why, and then reporting some of it. Um, I love that, you know, so I'm just like anyone else, like as much as I could possibly know, I'm good. But the two kind of parts of your job as an NFL insider is reporting the news and at times, you know, um, commenting on the news, what you think about the news, what it's going to do and everything. Is there one you like over the other more or do you like them both reporting it and commenting on it? Um, you know, I try when when I have comments on it, I try to stick to what I know and what I can report. Of course. So I don't give my opinion a lot. And I, you know, I don't know that people really care. Maybe they care about my opinion, but that's not what I do. Definitely right? not so, on social media, but when you go on shows and everything, there's yeah, that Yeah, but even yeah. still, you know, it's still based on like what I know. Yeah. You know, because I, I think, you know, having a well-defined role, like I don't want people to like, if, if you walk by a TV and you see my face on it, you should be like, that guy is going to tell me what I have to know. Yep. That guy's going to tell me something new. It shouldn't be like, oh, I wonder if he's going to tell me what he thinks. So I never will say like, oh, well, I think because like that's not why – that's not my job. That's not why I'm here. Mm -hmm. you know? So I try – so I like the – I just like telling people something they don't know. Like that's a really fun part of my job, and I think that's kind of the basics of it. Do you ever think about it though when you have like a report about an injury or something massive that can have a real effect on someone's fantasy lineup or anything? Do you ever think like you're just you're focused on your job putting it out there, but do you ever think, oh man, this is ruining a lot of days? For, this is going to ruin a lot of days. Do you think about the reactions a lot, or is it just does that happen kind of after you put the news out? Um, you know, you can sort of see when something gets a really big reaction. Now the injury thing, you know, there are injuries that you report that are just like terrible yeah, absolutely. you know and so like there are plenty of times when i'll report like big news and be like really bummed about it even though i have to report it knowing the kind of reaction you get because you get to know some players you get to know the teams the 100%. coaches you get to know the agents and so like you know it's like i remember like there, there's some big well, news I remember that your, your Brees hall tweet i remember that tweet i remember you yeah. you, put, you put well the, on x like it's x now but i remember mm -hmm. that specifically you know what i mean and that was yeah, yeah it's not easy it was, and that's a good example of like that was a feel-good story one of the best young players in the nfl was probably going to win offensive rookie of the year and is now out for the season yep. and now that sucks honestly like so you know and, and like another one is like you report someone has been fired yep like you know that's that's part of it that's part of my job and some get a really big reaction, but it is, it's not that fun, mm -hmm. you know, not fun at all. Um, and like, that's, you know, I, there's not a lot of celebrating with my job anyway, because God forbid you celebrate. There's always something other bit of news that someone else can report. Yeah. But like, we have to report those really tough ones. Like that's, that's pretty rough, you know? Everyone on social media thinks they know everything that goes into being an NFL insider. They know what the rap sheet does. They know what he's thinking. Like ever, there, there's all these people online and, you know, you see kind of the waterfall of all these posts and comments and everything. What is the biggest misconception, in your opinion, about being an NFL insider? Um, you know, I would say there's probably... I'm sure there's a bunch, but if there's one, there's I'm a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people will say to me, like, oh, you have the greatest job. You watch football all day long. And I do have a great job. Believe me. I love my job every day. 
But and you're very I good football. at it, Ian. I just want to oh, say. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I watch football like everyone else, but most of my job is sitting in this room making calls and talking about football. So it's like, mm-hmm. people say, oh, you want to watch football? It's like, ah, that's not really my job. The other part of it is, you know, I think people assume that, you know, people use the word leak. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this person leaked you a story. And I don't really like that because I have to work so much, so hard for every story. Um, I wish there was a lot of leaking. I wish teams were constantly like giving me this or giving me that. Mm-hmm. My job would be a lot easier. Um, but that's not really the way it works. You know, it's just every little piece of story is just a grind. Um, yeah. I'm not sure people understand that, but that's okay because like, you know, I have plenty of friends in finance and I have no earthly idea what they actually do all day long. So it's not like people need to know what I do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, getting back to NFL draft, the pick is in, um, you know, the documentary does an amazing job of chronicling kind of the first step of an NFL team trying to get better for the next season. That is the whole point of it. They are strategizing and everything. There are, there, there are a lot of metrics and sometimes you have to wait for them. You know, you have, sometimes you have to wait for the playoffs to see if, wow, this team actually got better or anything. Do you think people realize that and understand that, that there is a waiting game with that? It's the first step. We haven't seen training camp yet. And there's all this stuff about, you know, did they get better? Like, I don't even know, like, I'm not a big fan of even seeing like the draft grades because it's like, you don't know you're it's hypothetical at this point. Yeah, that's always a little frustrating for me. It's like you'll see someone play and you're like, okay, well, that guy is a bust. Like Jordan Love is a great example. Mm-hmm. Plays early. It was, you know, during a COVID situation. I think it was when Rodgers had COVID. And he did plays just okay, not great. Um, and everyone knew that he was a bust. And then he goes out last year. And so, of course, the GM is a joke because why would you draft a quarterback? And then Rodgers is unhappy and you ruined everything. And then everyone's bad. And then he goes out and plays last year, and you're like, hey, he looked pretty good. Maybe he's actually good. Wait a minute. Maybe instead of a joke, the Packers are actually smart because they have a transition plan. And and the reality is it's somewhere in there, and yep. we don't know. Yep. But like – and I don't, you know, I don't know an answer to it, but like everyone wants to make a decision right away on basically who sucks and who is good. Yep. And nobody knows anything. And I think that part of it is really hard because I do it too – where I'm like, okay, obviously this draft pick is whatever. You know, but it takes three years to figure out, or maybe it takes a new system. So I think that's really hard. But on the other hand, I understand why it happens because like, you know, everyone can only judge based on what they see at the moment. Absolutely. I am seeing a progression in terms of the global popularity of the National Football League, the NFL. I truly am seeing it. You know, part of the job of Pop Turnative as well, seeing what's out there and everything. And there are, you know, NFL fans from all around the world. You see it with all the, when they go to Europe for the season and everything. Documentaries like this really kind of help and elevate, I feel like, the game and everything. Did you think about that at all with NFL Draft the Pick is in, that this is something that's really going to help grow the game as well? Because I've seen people say, wow, like I'm really excited to get into the NFL more because of like documentaries like this one. I hope so. Um, Just because there's so many different fun parts of it. And people like we were saying, like, you know, people like to know what goes into everything that they watch and do. Um, And that's, you know, I try whenever people ask me to do things, um, I try to do them, you know. And so it was really a no brainer to do this documentary. One, I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know it was going to be this good, but I I felt it was going to be good. Um, But I just I like the sort of like education of people. Like, so you want to, you want to come into my world for three days? Like, come on, yep. like, let's learn. That's um, good. I didn't even think about like that. that. The education it. perspective. That's a very yeah. interesting point. Yeah, it's absolutely. Fun. And like, I'm, so that's like, I'm, I'm glad this turned out as awesome as it did. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really happy I did it. No, absolutely. And f- do you feel the pressure? There's a lot of fantasy drafts this week and next week. I mean, people are like, <laughs> people are going to, I mean, me. I feel the pressure <laughs> for my own fantasy drafts. Um, I got two of them. I'm in one with my sons. That's tomorrow. And then I got one at some point this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very stressful. It's very intense. Now, the only thing I'm glad about is they're both late. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the worst is when, like, I had people text me yesterday and be like, you know, Jonathan Taylor doesn't play the first four weeks. My fantasy team is screwed. And I'm like, it is not my fault that you drafted before the preseason is over. Like, draft should be from here over the next week. Yep. And 
the fact that you had a stupid time for your fantasy draft is not my fault. Mine is Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I yeah. know absolutely. But NFL Draft, the pick is in, is streaming now on the Roku channel. They have to check it out. I really enjoyed it. In again, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. It was really great chatting with you, man. Awesome. Great chatting with you, man. Take care. Thank and, you for having uh, me. And Rap Sheet, right on social media. That's where they could follow you, right? Rap Sheet everywhere. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn it Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.